Yeah. All right, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, comparison of automatic differentiation and continuous sensitivity analysis. And first to start, just uh, why do we care about taking derivatives of differential equations in the first place? Well, differential uh, derivatives of differential equations are used in all sorts of ways. One way that we're make, really making use of them is in scientific machine learning. So let's say you have a model that you kind of know, but you don't necessarily know all of the parts of it. What you can do is you can stick neural networks inside of your model. Um, and then train these neural networks in this context and then use that to automatically then you know, run a symbolic regression and automatically discover what the missing parts of your model are, right? So you know, this process of coming up with models, it is something that used to be hard but now is becoming a lot simpler with these scientific machine learning techniques. And all of this requires that you can train neural networks through differential equations, which means you need to gradient descent through differential equation solvers. And so differential equation derivatives come up all over the place. I'll, I'll end this, uh, the, this talk with another application that is actually very relevant to you know, 2020 and 2021 um, that also uses uh, this work. But I think that this is one nice uh, motivating example, right? You want to automatically learn differential equations, you're taking derivatives. Um, so, so if you were to look at something like the neural ODE paper that tells you like, oh, you, you, you calculate your adjoint by doing this, this. You, you, you solve an ODE forwards, and then you solve some ODE backwards specifically defined by this equation here. Um, and it turns out that if you do that procedure, then uh, this term in the ODE and this term in the ODE, the, at the end of that ODE solve, they give you the derivative of the solution with respect to the parameters theta, and they give you the derivative of the solution with respect to the initial condition. It sounds like a great idea, right? You just solve forwards and then you solve backwards. Um, but it turns out that there's a lot of different things that can go wrong with this. Um, for example, just because you solve forwards and then analytically solving this ODE backwards would get you back to the same point, it doesn't mean that it actually does that in practice. Um, it turns out that the that you know it does is it's not just it, that it doesn't bring you back there. It's that the error of doing that grows exponentially with the Lipschitz constant of the solve, and so anything that has exponential amount of error is probably a bad idea, right? Um, but another thing that comes into play is that uh, you know when you have a stiff ODE solver, um, you are doing things like solving linear uh, solving. Um, linear systems often, and so your compute cost goes up to cubic, right? And so um, you can read a lot of other papers about how the different, how these adjoint methods have been improved, uh, uh, actually fairly recently published in this last week. There are a bunch of improvements to these adjoint techniques. And so what this paper that uh, for HPAC has been all about is just, you know, let's actually just start to benchmark things and just see how well we can make these adjoints work out. You know, so, so with, with all of these new methods that have come for calculating derivatives of differential equations, um, what is good, right? <laughs> like, what, is, what should you be using, and uh, how much of a difference does it actually make? Um, so the start to any benchmark is to make sure that your code is actually fast enough that people should care about your benchmark, right? If you're benchmarking under bad conditions, then you then you know it's hard to really tell whether uh, other program effects can be involved. So for, I always like to start by showing that you know the the differential equation solvers here are well optimized. So uh, how well optimized? Uh, they're at least you know, about on average we see about 50 times faster than SciPy, about 100 times faster than RSDE solve. Um, so as a nice baseline against things that are slow, that is good. But you also want to make sure that you're faster than things that are like standard in C and Fortran. Um, and so here, uh, this is showing that the standard ODE solvers like CVODE, LSODA, um, uh, you know, the standard C Fortran methods, they're outperformed by these Julia uh, ODE solvers. So whatever we're doing, uh, and that's a completely other different talk, uh, but what we're, what we're using here are things that are very highly optimized. And so whatever is fastest in this condition is something that is going to be fastest generally, uh, something that you can really trust the speed of. So, okay. With that aside, then um, let's let's start looking at adjoint benchmark. Uh, you know uh, how we should be computing these derivatives. So there's two general ways you can be doing this derivative calculation. You can either be doing something known as a forward mode calculation, which is you know it's either using forward mode automatic differentiation or you append this ODE to your other system of ODEs um, instead of calculating the Jacobian vector product by calculating a Jacobian and multiplying by a vector. You can directly interpret that vector. Jacobian product as a directional derivative, and there you go. That gives you a very efficient way of, of doing these four sensitivities. Um, so okay, so is doing it with the appended equation or forward mode AD faster? Well, that's something to figure out. 
Um, the next thing is reverse mode or adjoint methods. Uh, you know, I mentioned that there's many different ways to solve this reverse mode. You'd have to re go read through the papers because that's a whole talk in its own, all the different uh, methods for doing that. But the real key here is that, um, that, that to really understand is that there's also this very important step where you have a vector times a uh, vector transpose times a Jacobian, which you should never actually compute by, by building a Jacobian and then multiplying. Um, instead, you should actually use reverse mode automatic differentiation for doing this, this primitive, which then brings in a lot of other issues, right? So is doing direct reverse mode AD faster than adjoint methods? Is, you know, which a, what are versions of reverse mode AD are going to be fastest for this part of the calculation, et cetera? And let, let me really dig into that part a little bit more, right? So when, when you're actually computing the adjoint equations to any kind of adjoint, right? So yeah, adjoints of PDEs or anything has have all the same behavior, you will always get a vector Jacobian product uh, in there. That's just uh, by by design. Uh, you know, you, you can show that that, that is uh, going to be the core of the, of the compute. And building the Jacobian would require an O of n operation because you're, that would be building. You know, numerical or AD methods will build it all one column at a time until you fill fill up the whole Jacobian, and then you would transpose and multiply by vector, right? Um, but it turns out that with reverse monomic differentiation, with one forward solve and with one reverse solve preset by lambda, it turns out you can do this computation. So this sends it from O of n to O of 1. Um, but there's many different ways to do reverse mode AD. So then you have all these questions of, well, you can do numerical to build this Jacobian and then multiply. You could do forward to build this Jacobian multiply. Or you can you know, push forward with a, with a traced compiled graph or with a static graph or et cetera, et cetera. All the different reverse mode techniques that you can do there. So what is actually a good idea to do? Well, it turns out that what, what we see at first is that if you are, have a very small problem, DSOD is the direct sensitivity analysis via AD, forward mode AD. What we see on very small problems is that forward mode AD on the solver will beat anything that you'll do by hand. And there, there seems to be a very clear reason for that. Um, it's because the forward mode AD is able to really use the compiler, gener uh, compiler to generate code that has more SIMD than having the other equations separate from the original solve. And so that tends to just get better vector usage. Um, and so you know, forward mode AD beats uh, you know, writing sensitivities by hand, even if you're doing the Jacobian vector products by uh, automatic differentiation. And so that, that tells you that if you, you know, if you have sufficiently small systems, you should be using forward mode AD directly on the OD solver. But what happens when you get bigger? It turns out that, you know, uh, so we looked at a, a stiff partial differential equation, the Brusselator equation, to come up with this. And what we see is, is multiple things in one plot here. One thing is that, um, you know, at around 50 to 75 ODEs is where you have this cutoff, where forward mode AD is now then superseded by things, uh, by adjoint techniques. But we also see that which adjoint technique you use matters a ton. So the newer adjoint techniques, which were developed um, as part of the stiff neural ODEs paper, is about an order of magnitude uh, more efficient um, than these other techniques that are, you know, not necessarily that are not necessarily using the the newer quadrature adjoint and using the interpolating adjoint that comes with the old CVODES software. Um, also, what this is showing you is that if you are not using a vector Jacobian product with reverse mode AD, you're also losing another order of magnitude or two as well. And so, something like the naive usage of CVODES is about three orders of magnitude um, slower than this more optimal adjoint. Now I'll mention right here that this is the method of CVOD. This is not com uh, comparing against CVOD at this point, though because we know that our implementations are more optimized than CVOD, at least for the ODE solvers, this is fairly good evidence that we should be a few orders of magnitude faster than CVOD ES. In a follow-up paper, we'll probably start to benchmark against that in PET CTS to show to show this difference. Um, but it and when I say that uh, you know that we're doing this vector Jacobian product seeding, well, what vector you know, does which reverse mode that you're using uh, matter for this result, right? And it turns out to, in order to get that good result, uh, the you need to be using static VJPs for that um, for that uh, adjoint, you know, for for that pullback operation. Um, it turns out that using other forms of vector Jacobian products, especially ones that are building the com uh, compute graph on the fly, um, make it so that way you do not get that full that full payback. And so, using this uh, very fairly new form from uh, Enzyme, um, which is a direct reverse mode AD that is mixing in the LLVM compiler optimizations, it is really what's required to really get that full three order of magnitude improvement. Um, 
Yeah, and, and so um, what we have from all this is we have a system where you can choose all the different adjoints and mix them with all of the different ways of doing the vector Jacobian products. Uh, some are more stable in other some cases, some require more memory. There's always a memory performance trade-off thing, but these benchmarks really show us like, you know, that the, the trade-off truly exists and that and these methods, which uh, which are really made for the for the fastest compute, really do get you know orders of magnitude improvements. Um, and all of these are then implemented inside of the Julius IML open source organization. And you know there's a lot of people already using it, but if you haven't seen this yet and you do a bunch of differential equation solving, um, come find us because uh, you know th we we have a bunch of tools that you might find interesting. Now just to end, um, you know so some of the things that people have seen, seen with the software ecosystem, for example, are uh, one of the big things was when uh, NASA launch service has moved over from uh, Simulink over to modelingtoolkit.jl and these differential equation solving and solve 15,000 times acceleration. Also, when uh, Pfizer uh, switched over a lot of their QSP um, simulations and saw 175x, um, I think that one thing that to really kind of end this whole story is to mention one of these other applications that have come up in the last year, which is that you know Moderna has been one of the core users of the Julius IML organization's tools through Pumas AI, um, and and. Uh, you know, it's actually the benchmarks of this paper that were the ones that were used to actually choose the di differentiation strategy that, re that are used in the differential equation solvers uh, for the nonlinear mix effects model fitting that are now used through, throughout this process. So, yeah, so, so basically what, what this means is that, you know, really figuring out that, you know, forward mode AD on static solves of et cetera, et cetera, uh, ODE solvers um, it has actually bubbled up all the way to direct applications. And now you can see it's being used uh, for, for a lot of things. So, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully this kind of gives a nice overview of a lot of the recent optimizations in the ways that uh, differential equation derivatives are being calculated. Thank you very much.